Welcome back. Turning to the midterm elections, depending on how it all goes down, Senate control next year could come down to who wins Pennsylvania. Of course, there's about nine Senate races that could play that role. And because there is no incumbent running, though, Pennsylvania is the most relevant state right now. Both parties are in knockdown primary fights over what kind of candidate and what kind of political party they want to be and will advance to a general election this November. We've seen both of these fights play out uh, up close. In fact, we saw them both last night as both uh, parties held their primary debates. On the Democratic side, the lieutenant governor and the front runner on that side, John Fetterman, remained under fire from all sides, especially over a 2013 incident when Fetterman, then a mayor of his hometown, confronted an unarmed black man after he says he heard gunshots. Fetterman still has a huge advantage in fundraising and in the polls. On the Republican side, we heard a lot of what's being said in Republican primaries around the country. He uh, heapings of praise for the former president, plus candidates spreading nonsense about the 2020 election, essentially candidates lying to the voters, apparently in hopes of currying favor with the party's Trump loyalist base. Take a listen to the take a listen to the two top candidates in the Republican primary race, the businessman David McCormick and Trump backed media personality Mehmet Oz. We have a, tr a tragedy here that most Republican voters in Pennsylvania don't believe in the integrity of the election. And there's all sorts of reasons uh, to worry about it. I have discussed with President Trump, and we cannot move on. We have to be serious about what happened in 2020, and we won't be able to address that until we can really look under the hood. Dasha Burns is monitoring uh, Luzerne County, Pennsylvania, as part of our 2022 Meet the Press County to County project. She also watched the Republican debate last night with some undecided voters there. So, Dasha, tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, Chuck. Three weeks from today, voters will be casting their ballots in this high-stakes Pennsylvania primary. And you know this race has it all. It's got big money. It's got big celebrity. There has been warfare on the airwaves here in this state. And all of that spilled over onto the debate stage last night. The frontrunners, Oz and McCormick, facing off in person for the first time. And most of the debate consisted of a fierce fight between those two. Oz, the celebrity doctor, touting his Trump endorsement, that he received that endorsement over his opponent, Dave McCormick, who was also seriously seeking that support from the former president. McCormick spent most of the night trying to paint Oz as too liberal, as a flip-flopper. And I want you to hear some of what he had to say about the celebrity doctor. Listen. The reason Mehmet keeps talking about President Trump's endorsement is because he can't run on his own positions and his own records. And the problem, doctor, is there's no miracle cure for flip-flopping, and, and Pennsylvanians are seeing right through your phoniness, and that's what you're dealing with, and that's why you're not taking off in the polls. Yeah, that last line from McCormick did get a bit of a round of applause from the voters that we were watching with who groaned just about every time Oz mentioned the Trump endorsement. The groans grew louder as he kept mentioning the Trump endorsement. And look, the heat is not turning down anytime soon. Just today, McCormick out with another ad attacking Oz, this time with Trump voters right. saying that uh, the former president made a mistake with his endorsement, Chuck. Tell me about the voters. How do they react? Well, I asked them to describe what they saw last night in one word. Some of the words we heard were mean, uh, not constructive, three ring circus. They were not uh, swayed that much by the two front runners, which was uh, a bit surprising. But look, Chuck, we watched the debate with undecided voters. And when you look at the polls, uh, the most recent Franklin and Marshall poll showed uh, Oz and McCormick ahead, 16 percent for Oz, 15 percent for McCormick, but a whopping 43 percent of voters are still undecided. That is a huge number. And I'll tell you, all of the voters we spoke with, they are Trump fans, but his endorsement of Oz did not make them Oz fans. And uh, last night, they were somewhat unimpressed with the two frontrunners. They were frustrated by the amount of attacks. They wanted to hear more from each candidate about their own positions on the issues, what they wanted to do for Pennsylvanians. I mean, look, people are suffering here from high gas prices. We, we did this inter interview at this gas station where last time I was here, yeah. the price of gas was about 380. It's now 419, right? And they wanted to hear more about that. They wanted to hear more about infrastructure and roads, which is so crucial uh, to Pennsylvania. And they surprisingly, Chuck, the winner of 
the debate from our small group was actually yeah. Jeff Bartos. He is a lifelong Pennsylvanian real estate developer. He's had a, a great ground game here uh, with voters, and they appreciated that he focused on the issues for Pennsylvanians and did not focus as much on his opponents, Chuck. Dasha, there is so many examples of two big moneyed primary candidates beating the living daylights out of each other, turning off the voters, and a third candidate shooting shooting uh, at the last minute. McCormick and Oz, both carpetbaggers. This is written all over them. I just don't know if Bartos has enough money. Dasha, does he have enough money to take advantage of what is clearly an opportunity here as I think the big money TV ad spending and the, and the negative nature is probably turning off some voters. Yeah, he doesn't have nearly enough to compete with these wealthy, wealthy frontrunners, Oz and McCormick. I mean, they have the money to keep up the warfare uh, on the airwaves, and Bartos does not have that. Is the ground game, is sort of the underdog status going to be enough? The voters we talked with last night kind of liked the underdog, kind of liked that he wasn't yeah. throwing around the big bucks like the other two. He was more uh, representative of the average Pennsylvanian, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see anything can happen in this state right now, Chuck. Well, Mike Braun's a U.S. senator because of a dynamic just like that that took place in Indiana in 2018. Dasha Burns uh, on the ground force in uh, Luzerne County, Pennsylvania. Dasha, thank you.